Well, I always like to see somebody who's having fun in the garden like that. So thanks for sharing your garden with us. And right now we're going to have some fun on the set. We are joined by uh, Janice Patton, who is a, a dog trainer and helps people control their dogs in garden settings, and a whole tribe of beautiful animals that you've brought along with you, Janice. This is the first time in 20 years we've had canine guests, so uh, welcome to Central Texas Gardener. Thank you for having us. Oh, you're most welcome, and you have what cute guys you've brought along, and our topic today is uh, helping folks who love dogs and love gardens put those two things together, but before we dive in and do that, you have to introduce us to your tribe, because they're, it's a pretty special looking lot. Okay. Um, over here up front, this is Kaiser. Kaiser is a Bernese Mountain Dog, and he's about an, a, a year and a half old. Wow. And he's, a, he's a big puppy. <laughs> he is about 110 pounds right now. Yeah, and beautiful animal. Thank you. And over here is Devin. Uh, Devin <laughs> is a um, perhaps Chinese crested mix. We don't really quite know. Yes. Now, Devin is the little guy sitting up right now. Right. And both of these dogs are from Town Lake Animal Control. And awesome, so, so they're the rescue adopted. dogs, mm -hmm. okay, awesome. And Angie, who's taking a bit of a nap right now, is she's probably about nine and she was four when we adopted her. Okay, beautiful little guys. Angie is the most adorable little thing. I don't know if people can, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely adorable. So um, when, we, when we talk about gardening and dogs, um, the big concerns people have are, oh, you know, they'll trample everything down or they'll dig everything up. Now. How do, you, how do you control the dogs in the garden setting? How do you help people do that? I think it's really good to find things that the dogs like to do in the garden and that they can do with you in the okay. garden. Okay. And so um, if you have a really active dog, mm -hmm. having a place that they can romp and play that you, you've set aside for them is really good. Okay. Um, if Fetch you, is a, a very popular thing. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you have a dog that has a propensity to dig, and a lot of terriers do. Mm -hmm. Teaching them other things that they can do with their paws, some paw games are mm -hmm. always a really good way to go. So uh, they, it's not just that they like to dig, it's the use of the paws themselves. Exactly. Ah, and I, you, I understand you wanted to demonstrate a little sure. bit of the game that, uh, that would, uh, is it with Devin? This is gonna be with Angie. Okay. So we can wake her up. Angie, okay. good girl, all right. Angie, good girl. Angie, can you shake? Good girl, that's really nice. You shake. Good girl. How about pause up? Angie, pause up. Oh, that's so good. Very nice. Um, all right, back in place. You can come back over here. He says, I really want to get in your lap. Angie, over here. Good girl, place. Very nice. Wow, very, I'm so, impressed. Yeah, no, very good. <laughs> very, uh, very attentive. And, you know, it's all in the time you spend with them, isn't it, really, when it comes to training? It really is. Good training increases your communication. Mm -hmm. And so if you're doing positive reward-based training, you're actually having more fun with your dog. Mm -hmm. And your dog really does like to do things with you. And right. so if you can figure out a game plan to do some team activities together, mm -hmm. they really can have a really good time with you outside as well. So uh, the little activities of just putting their paws up on things and, and shaking and that sort of thing really relieves that tension or the need to do something with their paws? Well, they are going to be doing something anyway. So just the amount of time that you take to say, you know, how about this? And especially if you do, if you train with treats and they get treats for giving you their paw, is it really that much more fun to go dig in the dirt? Ah, you know? yeah, right, right. But if you have a dog that likes to dig, then you may want to teach them a command like leave it. And leave it is really easy to teach. Mm -hmm. um, you can do that with treats as well. Okay. And it just means really seriously, not there. Okay. Okay. What are some other strategies for uh, dealing with dogs in, 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 who, who are diggers? Um, is, is there something physical that you can do with them? Um, Meaning that, like actually manipulating their paws. Well, I like to keep their nails pretty short. Mm -hmm. um, if you give your dog really great tools, they're going to want to go out and play with their tools. Ah. And so if you look at Kaiser's uh, nails, mm -hmm. you see how really pretty they are. They're really nice and short. Mm -hmm. And it just gives them less of a reason to go explore your garden that way. OK, so keep the, keep the nails short and, and keep them active. Now, a little while ago, you were saying, um, uh, we were we were talking about activities you can do with the dogs before we got on the set, and you talked about uh, turning compost with the dogs. Yeah, you can. If you have a dog that really likes to dig, you can have a dog help you turn your compost. Um, and re reward them for that activity. Yeah, exactly. You can also <laughs> come up with a digging pit. 
mm -hmm. where you really get an area that's very partitioned for the dog to go dig. And mm -hmm. you can hide treats and toys in there, and they can dig. If you want to share, you can make it one of those rakeable Zen gardens. Ah, uh -huh. that's kind of a cool idea, too. I like that very much. Uh, so. Uh, one of the things, um, you know, is cr and also leaving spaces for them. You referenced uh, play spaces, like for p playing fetch or something like that. But it's it's important if when you when you garden and you have animals that are going to be in the garden to give them little shady retreats too, right? Right. I kind of try to think of what my dog's wish list like might be, okay. like you know, a place to lie in the shade under her favorite tree, mm -hmm. a place to lie in the sun. Maybe if my dog's really into watching squirrels, then a, a good <laughs> high squirrel observation tree. Mm -hmm. When you say high, it's high for the squirrels. So the right, <laughs> high for the squirrels, not high for the dogs. <laughs> right. Um, I like for them to, you know, I don't want for them to be bored. Mm -hmm. And so leaving a dog outside all day to see what yeah. I come back to in my new garden design might not be like the best Right. Uh, garden design plan for me. That's right, and I, I think that's the biggest thing, really. And I think where people really get into problems is where they just use the backyard as the dog room, and then wonder right. why they can't garden. Right. Exactly. So uh, there are lots of good strategies here for, uh, and just in terms of helping them, uh, uh, you know, stay out of trouble. Um, now, I, one of the things that we wanted to talk about too is uh, the, uh, the, a lot of people think about. Problems. They think about digging. They also think about when the dogs use the back backyard as a bathroom. Yeah. And there's uh, some problems associated with that, but not necessarily ha have to be, right? Yes. If um, if the dog if your dog goes to the bathroom and you water your yard within eight hours of when your dog has gone to the bathroom, you can completely avoid urine burns in the yard because urine is just high in nitrogen, and that's really what we're <laughs> looking for. Uh, a Somebody's our... a guard dog here on the set, too, which is great. <laughs> that's all right. They're, they're, they're right now is very attuned to the camera activity right, back yeah. there, which is good. That's a good dog. <laughs> that's okay. So, uh, but the, ur the urine burning thing is, is, is an issue, but right. only if you let it be, right? Only if you let it be. So water it in within eight hours is your recommendation. Yes. And because, uh, again, the, the materials, the uh, urea and that sort of thing, it's, it's funny when you hear them describe fertilizer, they'll say urea, and you, you think, well, that can't be because that right. burns, right? <laughs> right. But, the, but if you water it in, it actually acts as a fertilizer in the garden. Right, and if that's not possible for you, you can also have a designated potty area that maybe is kind of out of the way. <laughs> well, that's it, it, well defining the territory is another thing that is very good dog. <laughs> You have to tell me, Devin, uh, this is a cute little thing about Devin's backstory. Not only was she a pound rescue, she a uh, Town Lake pound rescue, she actually was dumped on Town Lake, right? Well, yeah, Devin was at uh, the hike and bike trails, running out, grabbing the joggers, and then running, running back into the bushes. Mm -hmm. And so her early life, she wasn't too crazy about um, uh, so she's protective, in other words. Yes. Yeah. Well, that that is a very good dog. <laughs> and she, and uh, you know, when when you're working with people, do they? How long does it usually take to to turn? I th I think that this is turning the person around as much as turning the dogs around, right? How long do, does it take to really work with a family so that they can work with the dogs the way that you do? Uh, Generally, with most dogs and with most families, they need a couple of lessons if they're mm -hmm. kind of, you know, to get a few things smoothed out. When you need a puppy, or when you have a puppy, though, you really want to start doing a lot of training from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And so I have a new puppy. She's eight months old, mm -hmm. and she takes more work than my other seven dogs c combined. Yeah, well, puppies, they're, they're new children, right? Right. right. So they, they're, they're learning a lot. But but uh, one of the things, you know, you hear you, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, and but you, one of your dogs here was four when you got her, right? Right. Angie was four when I got her. She liked to dig. She liked to run away. Mm -hmm. And now she likes to just, she hangs out, yeah. you know? Just being a good dog. Yeah. Being That's what we want. Now, one of the things that you do in the garden is uh, it, it, dogs do like to help. Yes. And so fetching is something that they like to do in the garden. Yeah. And you, that's one thing that you've devised for your dogs, right? Well, yeah, they can actually help you find things that you lose. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dev, all right? Devin. Good girl. Good. Hey, Devin, look. 
Can you get that for me? <laughs> Devin, where is it? Devin <laughs> loves your lawn. Where is it? <laughs> there you go. Do you get it? Oh, oh good, girl. good girl. Thank you. That was very nice. She also is really great at bringing you refreshments if you're a little behind on your <laughs> water intake. Can you get the bottle? Where is it, Devin? Oh, that's it. Hey, Devin, bring it here. <laughs> Devin. It's all this and new stuff, Mom. She loves the grass. <laughs> there you go. You got all it. That's right. really good. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Just don't give her one of the two liter bottles. Right, <laughs> I think, yeah. Definitely. I think that would be a little bit too much for her. She is a sweetheart. Now, I, I, again, uh, for people who, who believe they can't put the two together, uh, you work with families. How can people find you? Uh, probably the best way is our dog site, our mm. website, okay. which is <laughs> arfdogtraining.com. ARF. ARF dogtraining.com. Okay, and that's a great way to get the whole thing started. And so that if people who want to, who have the heart to, to rescue a beautiful little critter like this or want to bring in a new member of the family and introduce them to the garden, they can do all that. Janice, thank you so much for being our guest on Central Texas Gardener. Thanks to the crew here. And coming up next, it's uh, Daphne.